everybody, welcome to another Gaffer and Gear. This is a, a, I suppose, a pickup episode from last week. Uh, last week we were talking about um, uh, inverse square law, which is the rate at which light drops off. And at the end of that episode, I chucked in a very quick tip for young gaffers about the relationship between moving a light forwards and backwards uh, to, to change the exposure on, on a subject and how that relates into inverse square law and f-stop numbers. And um, I got a few messages from people. so. Clearly I've confused people. So some people were saying that I've got my numbers backwards, so I'm going to explain why that's not the case, why my measurements aren't, aren't backwards in this scenario. And I also had uh, a couple of people say, the f-stop numbers I, I gave are not, not the f-stops you dial into the lens. I wasn't even talking about dialing anything into a lens. I was just using measurements. So um, the fact that people thought I was talking about you know, adjusting your aperture on a lens clearly shows that I, I lost people with my, uh, my quick uh, throwaway explanation. So uh, my apologies, I'm gonna, um, I've had a couple of days to think about it and I'm gonna try and explain it so that it makes more sense. Okay, so, all right, now here's the scenario. We've got a light and that light is eight foot away from our subject. Okay, now I'm gonna use feet because feet is easy for people to visualize, but it can be absolutely any unit of measurement. It can be millimeters, centimeters, inches, feet, um, whatever, light years, it, any, any measurement unit at all, the same numbers apply because we're talking about uh, square inverse law. So we've got our, our light, it's eight foot away from the subject and our light is at full intensity. And the DOP says, Andrew, can you give me one f-stop more light on our talent? In order to get this person brighter, I need to move the light in, okay? so. How far do I move the light in? Now, let's get to our next point. A lot of people thought I had the numbers the wrong way around. All right, so whatever is not moving is our point of reference. All right, so in this case, we're moving the light and our subject is staying still. So the light's moving and this person is staying still. So this person is our point of reference because they're the thing that's not moving. So you always measure outwards from your point of reference, okay? now. If the actor was moving towards the light, then the light's not moving. The light would be our point of reference and we take our measurements from the light outwards. So whichever thing is not moving is our point of reference. Okay, so that's important to note. So if we wanna get one f-stop brighter on our talent here by moving the light forwards, we have to move it forwards from eight foot to 5.6 feet. Now, just again, that's 5.6 feet from our point of reference. So this is where a few people got confused because I didn't explain it clearly. It's not 5.6 feet forwards of where the light is. Okay, it's 5.6 feet from our point of reference. Now, if we want to move the light forwards from that position to get another f-stop of light on our subject, we need to move the light forwards to four foot. Okay, so again, that's four foot from our point of reference, which is our subject. Now, if you want to get another f-stop, we're at four feet, and you want to move it forwards to get another f-stop, you move it to 2.8 feet. Okay, if you want another f-stop, move it from 2.8 feet to two feet. If you want an f-stop brighter on our talent, we change the distance from two to uh, 1.4. So that's 1.4 foot away from the talent. If you want another f-stop brighter on the talent, we have to move it in closer from 1.4 foot away from him to one foot. Okay, so some of you might be starting to recognize the numbers. Okay, now let's say we wanted to go the other way. So we're at eight foot and we want to reduce the light one f-stop. And for whatever reason, we're deciding to move the light. Maybe we don't have time to, um, to go to the van and get some ND. Maybe we don't have a wire kit. Uh, maybe the, uh, the light doesn't dim. Uh, who knows, we're just picking up the light and moving it back. Okay, so if we're at eight foot, if I move this back to 11 feet, now again, that's 11 feet from our point of reference. Now, if we're at 11 feet and we want to lose another f-stop, uh, you probably guessed the number is 16. Okay, so I've lost track of where that is here. I think that's there. I hope I haven't got the scaling wrong. And then from 16 feet, if we moved it back, uh, and we want another f-stop difference on our subject, we move it from 16 feet to 22 feet. All right, so if you're not recognizing the number sequence, basically, here's the number sequence here, it's the same as the f-stops on a, on a camera lens, 
okay? Now this is where people got confused. I'm not telling you what f-stop to put on the lens, okay? We're just using the number sequence as our measurements, starting at our point of reference. Uh, just to check that everything's okay and everything's correct, let's draw a scale of how much brighter we're getting, okay? So if I move the light from eight foot to 5.6 foot forwards, uh, 5.6 foot away from our, our subject, the light should be twice as bright. So let's just put that, uh, draw that on a scale. Okay, so twice as bright. Now if I move it to four foot away from our subject, it should be twice as bright again. Now if I move it to 2.8 feet away from the subject, from four foot, it should be twice as bright again. And I should be getting a logarithmic curve here if I'm correct. Now 2.8 to two feet, it should be twice as bright again. Now I move it to 1.4 feet, it should be twice as bright again. Okay, and um, the next measurement is off the board. Okay, so I've got a logarithmic curve. So eight foot to 11 foot, so it should be half the brightness, because we're going backwards. Okay, and this should be half the brightness to 16 feet. Okay, so we've got our logarithmic curve there. All right, so here's my advice to young gaffers. Um, start remembering f-stop numbers. It can help you out a lot. It can help you speed up your trims. Getting back to um, uh, measurement increments, here's a measurement increment I use a lot, and that is parked cars or parking spaces. So I might be shooting out on a street at night, and, and we've got the, um, the light four car parking spaces away, or four parked cars away from our subject, and the DAP says, Andrew, can I lose an f-stop of light off that? Well, I move it from four parked cars away, to 5.6 parked cars away, okay? So you can use um, in increments that you can visualize. Let's say you can't remember your f-stop numbers. Here's a tip that can help you. So regardless of distance, so here's our light, here's our subject, find the middle point, okay? And move the light to the middle point. That'll give you two more f-stops. Okay, so this person will be two more f-stops brighter because you've moved the light half as close to them again. Now, if you want another two f-stops, take that distance, find the center point, and that'll buy you another two f-stops. Now, when you're going the other way, it's the opposite. So how often do I need to pick up lights and move them on a set? Well, pretty much next to never. Um, I usually get a light that's brighter than what I need and then dim it. So I've got plenty of firepower in reserve. But there is one circumstance that happens about three or four times a year in which we find ourselves rushing to get more light, basically picking up lights and moving them closer to the subject. And that's when somebody further up the food chain than me or the cinematographer decides to shoot at a higher frame rate. So we've had jobs where we're shooting at 25 frames a second, which is normal, normal frame rate here in Australia and then someone decides to do a super slow-mo at 200 frames a second. In which case, even if I've got leeway on my lights, they're not gonna be bright enough. We've got the wrong lights on the set. So that's about the only reason that um, these days that I end up picking up lights and moving them. I'm Andrew Locke, see you on the next episode of Gaffering Gear.